The German wire-haired pointer is first and foremost a versatile sporting dog. His intelligence, energy, and determination, as well as his protective harsh coat, allow him to work on land and in water under a multitude of conditions. He is also a prized companion and protector of home and family. The breed originated at the end of the 1800s when much social change came to Germany. Because the peasants and farmers could not afford a kennel full of dogs, there was need for a versatile dog that could do it all. The breed was officially recognized in Germany by 1870, but did not appear in America until 1920. It was admitted to AKC registration and granted separate show classification in 1959. You'll be seeing many German wire-haired pointers during this presentation. Some are outstanding examples of the breed, others are less so. But all will help your understanding of the German wire-haired pointer. In general appearance, the German wire-haired pointer is a well-muscled, medium-sized dog of distinctive appearance. The breed's most distinguishing characteristic is its weather-resistant, wire-like coat and facial furnishings. The typical German wire-haired is slightly longer than he is high as measured from point of chest to point of buttock and withers to ground. The desired ratio is 10 to 9. Correct size and balance are essential to the high performance level demanded of the breed. Dogs should stand 24 to 26 inches at the withers, while bitches are smaller they Animals that are either over or under the desired height should be penalized. Proper balance and size must be maintained to ensure the working quality of the breed. Adequate bone and substance is important as these sturdily built dogs should give an impression of power without coarseness. Let's begin our detailed examination of the German wire haired with the head. The head should be pleasing to the eye. It is moderately long with a broad skull at maturity and a fairly long broad muzzle. Length and breadth of the muzzle should balance the back skull. Muzzles that are weak and snipey or too short and coarse should be penalized. You can see that the occipital bone is not too prominent. The stop is medium. The planes of the skull and muzzle should be parallel. From the front, you can see the breadth of skull and muzzle. The nose is dark brown with nostrils wide open. A spotted or flesh-colored nose is to be penalized. Judges should feel for true proportions of the head under facial furnishings. This head is correct, moderately long with a medium stop. See how the nasal bone is straight and parallel to the top of the skull. The skull is broad, the muzzle is in balance, and the occipital bone is not too prominent. Note again the dark brown nose. The lips are a trifle pendulous, but close to the jaw and bearded. The jaws should be strong with a full complement of evenly set and properly intermeshing teeth, meeting in a true scissors bite. The ears are rounded, but not too broad. They should hang close to the head, like this. Dogs may or may not have ear fringe. Both are acceptable. Eyes are brown in color. They should be medium in size, oval in shape, bright and clear, and overhung with medium length eyebrows. Eyes darken with age, especially in young dogs who have a dark ring around the iris. Note that yellow eyes or round eyes are not desirable. Now let's consider the German wire-haired pointer's neck and body. The neck is of medium length and slightly arched. There should be no dewlap with the skin notably tight to the body. 
throatiness is undesirable. The neck should blend smoothly into the shoulders, which are well laid back, allowing the reach and freedom of movement demanded in the field. A shoulder that is too straight is incorrect and will prevent a dog from reaching properly. From the front, you can see the good muscling of the shoulders without being heavy or overdone. The chest is deep and capacious, allowing plenty of room for heart and lung function. Elbows should be held close to the body. Forelegs are straight and flat-boned rather than round, but not so heavy and coarse as to militate against the dog's natural agility. Pasterns are strong with a slight slope. The front feet are round in outline and are webbed. They're high arched with toes close and with thick, hard pads. They toe neither in nor out. The nails are strong and quite heavy. Dew claws are generally removed. As noted earlier, the German wire-haired's body is a little longer than it is high in a ratio of 10 to 9. The line from neck to shoulders to back should flow smoothly without an angular look or abruptness. See how the top line is short, straight, and strong, with a perceptible slope from withers to croup. The ribs should be well sprung, the loins should be taut and slender, and the tuck-up of the underline should be apparent. The German wire-haired's tail is set high and is carried at or above the horizontal when the dog is alert. It is docked to about two-fifths of its original length. Hindquarters are characterized by strong muscular thighs with moderate angulation at stifle and hock. From the rear, the croup is nicely rounded. The legs are parallel, with hocks turning neither in nor out. Rear feet, like the front feet, are round, webbed, and have thick, hard pads. As with the front feet, dew claws are generally removed. What about this dog's hindquarters? Its angulation is too straight. This will limit his driving power and is not in keeping with the breed's strength and endurance in the field. This dog is correctly angulated, presenting a balanced appearance. Note again the strong, powerful muscling of the thigh. The German wire-haired pointer must have a correct coat to be of correct type. The coat is weather-resistant and, to some extent, water-repellent, with an undercoat dense enough in winter to provide insulation, but thin enough in summer to be almost invisible. The outer coat is straight, harsh, wiry, and lies flat to the body. It is generally one to two inches in length. It should not be so long, however, as to hide the outlines of the dog. Its purpose is to protect the dog from rough cover. Note that the hairs in the liver patches of a liver and white dog may be shorter than the white hairs. Remember, function should be the key word. The coat does not need to be long to have texture and be protective. A correct coat will feel harsh. Note that while the coat of a puppy may be shorter than that of an adult coat, it still maintains a harsh, wiry texture. A soft, open coat like this will lead to excessive coat and furnishings. It will attract dirt and debris and will weigh a dog down in the water. This defeats the purpose of a wire coat. Conversely, a smooth coat will not protect the dog traveling through hard cover or swimming in cold water. Note that a soft, woolly coat or a short, smooth coat or an excessively long coat is to be severely penalized. The coat is naturally short and close-fitting on the skull. Eyebrows are formed from strong, straight hair, 
while beard and whiskers are of medium length. Over the shoulder and around the tail, the coat is very dense and heavy. The tail is nicely coated, especially on the underside, but should be devoid of feather. The coat is shorter on the lower legs and is of a softer texture between the toes. As for color, the coat is liver and white, or solid liver. The head and ears are liver, and there may be a white blaze on the head. In either case, any black in the coat is to be severely penalized. There are many variations in the shades of liver, from chocolate to dark, dark brown. A dog with black in his coat will have a black nose. A dog with a liver-colored nose does not have any black in its coat. The nose on a liver or liver and white dog will always be liver. Although coats should be neatly groomed to present a natural appearance, extreme or excessive grooming that destroys this natural look should be severely penalized. The German wire-haired's gait should be free and smooth, like this, with good reach in front and drive from behind. Coming toward you, the front legs should be carried straight forward not thrown out to the side. And going away, the rear legs should follow in a straight line behind the front legs with good driving power. This dog is moving too wide in front and is paddling. Here again is correct movement, free and smooth. See how the top line remains firm. Note that the German wire-haired pointer should be evaluated at a moderate gait, like this. Finally, a word about temperament. The German wire-haired may at times be aloof, but not unfriendly towards strangers. The breed is known for its enthusiasm for learning and its